by my partner, Dr. Donald Moyne, and this is our weekly influence show coming to you live currently on Facebook, in, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube as a live stream every Monday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. And uh, we're going to start off with a theme for each show. Today, our topic is going to be closing. And uh, Dr. Moyne, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I had a great weekend, productive weekend, worked both days, but I took time off to watch that great Super Bowl game. I'm excited to be here. We've got some powerful ideas to share with the folks. So let's get started. You know, my team is the 49ers. and We got crushed a couple mm. weeks before by the Eagles. So uh, I was at the gym yesterday during the game, but I did hear it was a uh, a great game came down to that last field goal at the end, and the uh, Chiefs were victorious. So uh, good for the Chiefs. I see oh, we yeah. already have we already have some people signing in here. So welcome to uh, everybody. Welcome to Samuel. Welcome to uh, Hala, Christopher, and all the rest of you. Fantastic! Yeah, if you're just joining us, if you want to type into the chat and let us know where are you joining us from. And uh, if you do sales as a profession, if you want to type into the chat, uh, what do you sell? And our topic today is closing, which is, you know, that's a very hot topic. People always want to know, how do you close more effectively? And uh, Dr. Moyne and I have some really great solutions to that question. How do you close more effectively? So why don't you start us off, Dr. Moyne, with any thoughts that you'd like to share? Just an opening thought or two or three about closing. Okay. Obviously, extremely important. I want to start with the kind of a funny story, a situation that uh, this is like a slice of my life. I have people approaching me saying, Dr. Moyne, I want you to teach me the most powerful closing techniques that you have. And I listen to the way they sell. And I realize the problem that a lot of people have, there's actually an overemphasis. There's an overemphasis on closing. And they're trying to make up for weaknesses earlier in their presentation by, uh, their, you know, with their desire to learn power closing techniques. So one of the things I've learned from sales superstars I've worked with, some of the people I've written about in my books, I've talked about in, in webinars that Eric and I have done and I've done with other people. And when I coach people is that sales, sales superstars they, instead of emphasizing power closing, they emphasize power opening. They open so strongly. They're so likable. They're so trustworthy. They're so persuasive that from the first moment, people start having that feeling like, I want to do business with this person. I trust you. I like you. You understand my needs. And, and part of the way you get there is by asking the right questions. And Eric and I are gonna do a whole show on the best questions to ask, how to ask questions, what kind of questions to ask at different parts of the sales presentation, the sales call. So that's my first message is to focus uh, on opening hard, doing a, 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 a tremendous job on opening. And the close is going to almost take care of itself. I want to share one more insight with you and turn it back over to Eric. We'll open it up. And that is find out what someone really wants. Find out their values. Find out what they are most passionate about obtaining or experiencing. When you are selling someone what they truly want and truly deserve, it's almost impossible to resist. Let me give you an example. If you were running out of oxygen and I was selling you oxygen, I would not have to use a power close on you. You know, you don't have oxygen for three to five minutes. You're not going to last very long. So think about that when you think about how important it is to find out what they really want, what they really need, what's going to add to the quality of their life. When their head hits the pillow that night, what are they thinking about? 
when it comes to your products, your services. Do everything you can to deliver that to them. If you're taking notes, write this down. People cannot resist their own values. People cannot resist their own thinking. It will really mess them up psychologically if they try if they try to do that. So part of your job is to be a, a great detective and a relationship builder and to find out what do they most want, what do they most cherish, what do they most value. And then of, of all the things that you can sell them, sell them what's closest to that. If you're selling houses, find out exactly what they're looking for in a house. They may not be able to get everything, you know, in their in their price. Uh, range. But if you get what is the absolute closest of all the properties on the market and you present that to them, the close is going to be so much easier. I've got a lot more insight insights to share with you, but I want to turn it over to Eric. And Eric, why don't you share some insights on closing uh, with the folks on the call today on the, in the show? All right. And I'm trying to figure out how to bring us both on here. So let's see what okay. did I have that maximize <clears throat> Mac. There we go. Now there we, we are. All right. <laughs> I'm learning the technology mm -hmm. here, everybody. Um, mm -hmm. I want to share two things. And one is one of um, Dr. Moyne's quotes that certain things stick with us. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is an idea that, that has always stuck with me. When you identify the true need of your prospect, your presentation becomes almost irresistible. Mm -hmm. And, any time that I was with somebody in a presentation, I hadn't gotten to the close yet, mm -hmm. but I knew I had really honed in on their true need. It just gave me a tremendous amount of confidence mm -hmm. knowing there's a great possibility that I'm going to successfully close this sale. I want to tell all of you a, a story about one of my clients. Uh, her name is Janice, and she sells custom men's suits. Mm -hmm. And as part of a coaching exercise, I allowed her to sell to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wasn't in the presentation looking for a custom men's suit to buy. I was there to experience her presentation, see if I could enhance it in any way. And she did not come to the presentation with a well thought out presentation. And what she did is what I think most people do is they wing it. And I want you always to all remember this, that when you wing it, you get wing it results. And I can relate because before I met Dr. Moyne, this is going back to 1993 when I was the bottom producer at my company and I was put on quota probation. I was going in my presentations. I didn't have a plan. I didn't have an outline of what I was going to cover. I didn't know the questions to ask. I didn't have a well thought out close. I didn't have um, a clear outcome. It's like, no wonder I was struggling. And when I was introduced to Dr. Moyne's ideas, it provided me a structure. I learned all about scripting. And I started going into my presentations with a plan, with clear language on what to say when I was asking for the order. And within 60 days of learning these ideas, I became the top producer in the company. And so I wanna share with you what I shared with Janice is I let her know, hey, we need to create an outline. We need to figure out the success stories that you're going to tell. We need to really pay attention to the probing questions that you're asking. And in her case, it was what I call a one call, two call close. Meaning, in my view, she should meet with the prospect. In this case, it was me. And do a needs analysis. And then not make an offer other than booking the next appointment. And then booking the next appointment she would then go through her recommendation and, and ask for the order. And so I re-engineered her entire presentation based on Dr. Moyne's principles and her sales immediately increased. So sometimes it's mindset. And we'll talk a little bit about mindset today as well. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's just good old fashioned nuts and bolts, preparing the presentation in advance mm -hmm. and really thinking it's doing the upfront work. And, and before I turn it back to Dr. Moyne, I have a question for all of you. How many of you are coming to the realization you need to be doing more preparation for your presentations? And if that's you, type the word yes in the chat, because that can be your million dollar tip. Your realization that you need to be doing more preparation for your presentation. So, Dr. Wayne, you taught me all about preparation. <laughs> so 
Mm-hmm. Let me hear your thoughts on um, what I just shared. You know, I've seen that payoff in your life, Eric, again and again and again. You have become a master at preparation. When I've had my best weeks, my best months, um, and you know, folks, to put together a great month, all it takes is you just think about the best day you ever had and 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 try to recreate that. I call this your recipe for success. Try to figure out all the things you did when you had that best day where no one could turn you down and make that explicit, write that down, and then re- try as much as you can to recreate that today, tomorrow, the next day. I mean, a lot of salespeople, if you could just do, if you just focused on that, on, on your personal recipe for success, you could work three, three and a half days a week and make as much money as most salespeople working five days a week. Eric also did this when he was a salesperson for Tony Robbins. People think, this was in the, in the mid to late 90s, they, people think, oh, Tony Robbins is such a great guy, and he is a great guy. You know, we all admire him. Uh, they think that people just, you know, wake up in the morning or as soon as they hear about Tony Robbins seminar, they just sign up. Well, it actually takes an army of people to sell those Tony Robbins seminars. And Tony had this army of people. He would fly around the United States to do the seminar, to uh, sell his <laughs> He would fly them to different, different cities. Eric was one of the people in the army. And Eric rose out of all of those salespeople. Eric rose to become number one in part because of the great preparation he did. So if they were flying him to Kansas City, Eric figured out all of the big uh, companies that had lots of salespeople. It might be this car dealership, this company selling photocopiers, this company selling cell phones. And he would go there and make sales presentations and sign people up. Eric mentioned the word mindset. I'm glad you did that, Eric. Because folks, in closing, mindset is extremely important. Not just in the closing, not just near the end, but your mindset going in from the very first words out of your mouth. You want to have an assumptive mindset. You want to tell yourself, they are going to buy for me. They're excited to do business with me. And even before that, tell yourself, I'm going to make a new friend today. You, you want to be able to control your self-talk because that helps to control your mindset. If you go into the sales call, whether it's a phone call, a Zoom call, or a live presentation, you know, if you're knocking on doors or, or doing whatever you're doing, you know, if you go in there telling yourself, oh, man, this is going to be tough. I've never been successful selling people like this. This person's so much older than me. This person's so much younger than me, you know. Uh, what I call talking dirty to yourself, you know, uh, saying these things about how difficult it's going to be, or this is a drag. I'm burned out. I've made five sales calls today. I've made five presentations today. I'm so, you know, I'm, I'm so tired of this. You're not going to be nearly as successful as if you tell yourself, at a minimum, I'm going to make a friend. I'm going to open a door. I'm going to start building a great relationship. I'm probably going to have repeat business from this person. I'm probably going to get a lot of referrals from this person. So you want to start with that positive, assumptive mindset. They're going to love what I'm going to share with them. It's really going to help them. They're going to be excited about this. They're going to want to do business with me and refer their friends to me. One other insight I want to share with you and then I'll turn it back over to Eric, is timing. Timing is crucial in, in when you close. And I want, to, I want to tell you something, folks. A lot of people, their sales presentations are much too long. I do a lot of work with financial planners and top people in the insurance field. And I am just amazed at the number of financial planners where their very first meeting with a prospect is an hour, an hour and a half, sometimes two hours long. And I say, why are you insisting on these very long meetings? Well, it's so that I can gather all the data, all their financial data and find out where all their accounts are and where all their money is and how it's invested. And then I'm gonna uh, analyze their portfolio. And that's all well and good. 
But have you noticed this, folks? People, their attention spans are getting much shorter. This is the TikTok generation. And it's not, I'm not, not just talking about teenagers. There's a lot of adults, their, their attention spans are much shorter. It's one of the reasons in doing the influence show that Eric and I have limited this to 30 minutes. We could make it an hour, but we know that you guys are busy and you want us to get right to the point, share some powerful ideas with you and get on with the rest of your day. So what I wanna share with you is that in many cases, and I'm doing this with my clients right now, I'm having great results. I am shortening the sales cycle. I am having them close earlier in the presentation. In some cases, much earlier than they ever thought they could close. A number of years ago, I studied an automobile sales superstar, uh, a guy, his first name is Neil. I wrote about him in Unlimited Selling Power, this book. And one of the things Neil would sometimes do, not always, but if someone walked onto his uh, the car lot he worked at, he sells Porsches and Audis, expensive cars. I, uh, I didn't know he was a superstar until after he sold me a very expensive Audi, but uh, uh, top of the line Audi, but uh, that's when I learned and that's when I decided I got, I'm gonna study this guy. But he would, here's what he would do. If someone walked onto the lot and they looked at this car and they looked at another car, they went back and looked at this car, they looked at another car. They went back and looked at this car, then they looked at another car and they went back to this car. He knew they're very interested in this car. And sometimes if they look kind of friendly, he would walk up to them with a big smile on their face when they're next to this car that they keep coming back to. They're just like, oh, that, that, car, that car's like a magnet to them. And he'd walk up to them, he would say, well, are you ready to buy? And usually people would kind of chuckle because you know they knew that he knew that they loved this car. And, um, I said, Neil, does this ever work? You know, he hadn't built, he hadn't built rapport. He he broke all the rules of selling. And he said, you know, Dr. Moy, he said, like one or two times out of 10, if they have just kept going back to that same car, and mm -hmm. I say, Are you ready to buy? He says, one or one or two out of ten times they buy. He said, We just talk about the price, the service plan, the delivery. And so, folks, that just blew my mind that he just skipped all this other long stuff that uh, other car salespeople go to. Let me show you this car. Let me show you that option. Let me show you this, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I've tried to apply this in my own selling and also to uh, with a number of people I'm coaching. And right now, for example, in the insurance field, I'm taking some people who had very long presentations, making them very short, and we're getting positive results from it. I'm doing it in some of my presentations where people, they uh, connect with me on LinkedIn, they read my profile, they like what I'm doing, maybe they read a book I wrote, they saw a webinar I did. And one of their first questions to me is, um, how much, uh, you know, how do you charge? What, what do you charge? And, you know, I used to say, well, let me tell you a little bit more about how I work. Let me tell you the benefits of working with me. I've had this whole thing I would go through. And now I just get right to the point and I just say, it's very simple. I try to make it very easy to work with me, try to make myself very affordable. It's $500 an hour. With most clients, I start with a 10 hour retainer. I only wanna work with people who are serious about their careers, who are serious about becoming successful. So it's a 10 hour um, retainer, it's $5,000. It's very simple to get started. And you know, I'm having a lot of success with that. And it's saving me a ton of time. I, because some people just say, I can't afford that. And I say, great. You know, once you once you're making a little bit more money, you're a little bit more successful and you want to become really successful, come back to me. I'll be here. And hopefully I'll have the time to work with you then. So those are some uh, things I want you to think about folks, take some notes down on, pay attention to your timing and because your time is so valuable if you can look for opportunities to close early and i'm going to say one final thing i'll turn it back to eric and that is look for buying signals look for times when people show you that they're ready to buy like let's say let's go back to the car example if you're selling cars they say well can i get it in red that is a buying signal that they want it and that's when you, it, it's a perfect time, even if you've only been talking to them for three minutes, to go in for a close.
Eric, I'll turn it back over to you. Fantastic. Those are some great ideas, Dr. Moyne. And I want to piggyback on the, um, the time. Mm -hmm. And I want all of you watching this right now, I want you to reevaluate the length of your presentation. Ask yourself, does it need to be as long as it is? Or do I need to meet with a prospect as many times as I do? And I met with a life insurance person one time. And he just insisted on meeting with me. He, we got to do another meeting. And I don't, I'm like, I don't need another meeting. I'm ready to buy. He had me at, if you pass away, Eric, will your wife be able to pay the mortgage? Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, I don't know. I never thought about it. Mm -hmm. He goes, well, think about it. Heaven forbid, something happens. You pass away. Could your wife pay the mortgage? I go, no. And he goes, well, what would happen then? I said, she'd have to sell the house. I said, is that what you'd want for your family? Mm -hmm. said, no. Okay, well, for an affordable amount, we can come in and we can pay off the mortgage so your wife wouldn't have to move. Mm -hmm. I was sold in that sentence. He, mm -hmm. We hadn't even got to the close. Mm -hmm. And then he wanted to keep meeting with me. Mm -hmm. And I allowed it for a bit. And then finally, I'm like, look, I just, I'm ready to buy it. I don't need to meet with you again. Mm -hmm. And so if we take a look at the, the length of the presentation, I'm very time conscious when I sell, because when we're selling to somebody, it's all about entering their world and viewing their experience from their perspective. It's not about me. It's about them. And I want to do a little close with you guys because Dr. Moyne was just mentioning how he works with people uh, with coaching. And I, I share this on the last show. If you were here, you, you remember this. Um, Dr. Moyne's never done a show like this before. <laughs> so this is like the first time his content is going out in a with in like internet and like blow it up over the internet. And so um, he is not going to be available at that price point much longer. Or if he stays at that price point, he's going to have a waiting list. So um, I've worked with Dr. Moyne as my coach since 1990, 1994. And without him, I was on quota probation when I met you, Dr. Moyne, and I wouldn't have made it in sales without your ideas. And it's meant millions and millions of dollars for me. And I know you've had many clients where it's meant millions and millions of dollars. And so you guys can reach out to Dr. Moyne if you have an interest. That's a, a, a bargain for the quality, the elite training and coaching that you're going to get in your one-on-one -on -one time with him. And you can reach out to Dr. Moyne over LinkedIn and connect with him. So I want to share two more quick ideas and then I'll turn it back over to Dr. Moyne. And that is my number one Closing tip of all the ideas I know, here's my best one. And by the way, that's um, I'm setting up your listening by using a scripting technique called an interest creating remark. Mm -hmm. Of all my ideas, I'm doing this work for all these decades. This is my number one closing tip. You can use this in a sales presentation by saying to somebody, of all the ideas that I have to share with you about life insurance, about real estate investing. This is the best idea I'm going to share with you today. And it opens up their listing. So here's my number one idea. Have the prospect want what you're offering before you get to the close. Mm -hmm. And the way that you do that is with a benefit-driven presentation. Mm -hmm. And the way that you deliver a benefit presentation, I only know one way to do it, and that's to prepare it in advance. Mm -hmm. You're not going to go in and wing it and be spontaneously brilliant. Mm -hmm. not going to happen. But if you prepare to deliver a brilliant presentation that's benefit-driven, you can do it over and over and over and over and over again. Every presentation, you can knock it out of the park. It doesn't mean everybody's going to buy. Mm -hmm. but you can consistently deliver a dynamic presentation by preparing in advance to create that. So I want to put one new idea for closing today into the conversation, and that is to use sales creativity to close the sale. And years ago, I wanted to work for famous motivator, Tony Robbins. And so I thought the way I'm going to do it, I was living in San Diego at the time, which is where his headquarters was. I'm just going to go down there, walk in, ask for an application, fill it out, have him interview me, and hopefully that'll work. And so that's what I did. I drove down there. The receptionist greeted me. What can I help you? Yeah, I'd like to apply for a job. She gave me the application, filled it out. A couple of days later, I get the, get the call for the interview. So I do the interview. A couple of days later, I get the call. Thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> and they wouldn't hire me. But I had decided in my mind 
that they were going to hire me. So instead of being, you know, rejected by that, or oh, I, I'll have to go work for some other company, I use sales creativity. And I said to myself, how else could I get in there? And I thought I could create a referral. So that's the strategy I did. And I did it, Dr. Moyne, with somebody who, you know, Mark Gonzalez. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mark used to own a Tony Robbins franchise. Mm -hmm. So I thought he might know somebody at corporate. So I called up Mark and I said, Mark, you know, I'm trying to get a job with Tony Robbins. Could you refer me in there? And he goes, yeah, call Deb Hines. So next day I called up Deb. She answered the phone. Oh, hi, Deb. My name is Eric Laffa. Mark Gonzalez referred me to you. She goes, oh, well, what can I do for you? She said, I'd like to apply for a job. I want to come work for you. She goes, okay. So we booked the interview. I walked into the same building. I'd already been in an interview, been turned down. I interviewed with her. I got hired and the rest is history. So what closed that sale, one was commitment and two was creativity. So sometimes if you can't, you know, I literally walked in the front door, that didn't work. Come in the side door, you come in the chimney, you come in the back door and there's different ways of closing a sale. And Dr. Moyne, with that, I want to turn it back over to you for any final thoughts, whether you want to talk about what I just shared or a new idea, anything else that you'd like to share today? Well, I want to um, underline a couple things that number one, Eric became the number one salesperson out of all these people in the country for Tony Robbins. And what he also demonstrated there, folks, is the power of practice. Because even though he didn't get the job from the first interview, he learned things from that first interview and then he applied creativity. One of the things I do with my clients, I know Eric does this with his clients, is we role play. We don't just talk about closing techniques because we each know dozens and dozens of them. Eric and I, during the uh, pandemic, we sold a big webinar series and we did all kinds of webinars on closing. But it's not enough just to read books about, you know, 101 power closing techniques uh, or to hear people talk about it. You have to practice it to get great. Practice does make perfect. So we role play it with uh, our clients. I, I do a lot of role playing with my clients. And they say, okay, I get it, Dr. Moyne. I get it. I know what I'm going to do when I go in and do this presentation. I say, okay, let's do it. I'm the customer. I'm the, I'm the prospect. Uh, let's, let's go through your presentation. And, you know, it's amazing. You think you have it. And then you do a role play. And you realize it's not as easy as you thought. You know, different objections come up, different concerns come up. And what you really want to do to become a very effective closer is you want to anticipate and disarm those objections. So you don't want to wait for them to bring it up and, and hit you with it, but you want to be so self-confident. And this blows a lot of people's minds because they've never seen a salesperson like this, that you say, you know, if I was in your position, I would want to know about our financing plans because this piece of equipment, let's say you're selling, you're doing industrial selling. I've had a number of clients in that field. Let's say you're selling a $300,000 piece of industrial equipment. Uh, you know, you, you want to just be right up front and say, you know, this piece of equipment looks expensive on the surface. I know it's going to save your company. It's going to save your company so much money. It's going to pay for itself very quickly. But if I was in your position, I'd want to know about the financing plans because we make it very affordable to buy this equipment with our low cost, low interest rate financing. So you, you are so self-confident. Bring up the objection first and then answer it. And here's why this is so effective. It, number one, it shows tremendous self-confidence. And write this down in your notes. People buy self-confidence. The most self-confident person wins. If the prospect is more self-confident in their objections than you are in your presentation, you're not going to make the sale. If you are more confident in the value of what you bring, remember, folks, it's never about price. It's always about value. And if you're more self-confident in the value of what you bring, then you're going to make that sale and it's going to be a win-win for both of you. So practice. You don't have to practice with me. You don't have to practice with Eric. 
practice with a peer, practice with someone else, so with someone you work with. If they're not around, you can practice with your spouse if you can convince them to do that. That's a whole other sale. But folks, you have to practice because you don't, a final thought I'll leave you with, I'll turn it back over to Eric to wrap it up. And by the way, you can connect with me on LinkedIn. That's the only social media platform I'm on, Dr. Donald Moyne. Look forward to connecting with you. Um, I had one one final thought I wanted, and I just, and it just slipped my mind when I mentioned uh, LinkedIn. Um, just what, but I just want to underline the, the extreme value. Oh, I hear you here. I remember what it is, folks. Don't use live people as guinea pigs. Some of you are buying leads. I know people in the financial planning field, in the insurance field. They pay three hundred dollars per lead. I know people, I know attorneys who pay a lot of money for leads of accident victims because, you know, that's that's very lucrative. Don't burn up your money by practicing on live people without first practicing on your own because that can get very, very expensive. It's in and uh, you make mistakes that you won't make if you practice. So uh, role playing is one of the most powerful ways you can learn. Eric, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Fantastic, Dr. Moyne. It's been just so great to be with you today. We ended up 40 people on the, the live stream that I great. can see. There, there might even be more, though, yeah. uh, uh, because they could be on YouTube, but we can't see them. And anyway, for the mm -hmm. second show, I just think that's fantastic. And um, I want to thank you for saying yes to me because I know it was um, – that's a big request. Hey, let's do a weekly show. Mm -hmm. I know how busy you are. Mm -hmm. And uh, so thank you for, for saying yes. And I was just really excited to mm -hmm. share your knowledge and wisdom with my audience. And I've had the, the benefit of it, you know, for mm -hmm. several decades now. And not just my audience, but your audience and then the, all the new people that we're going to bring. And we would love it if all of you would let let your um, your sales manager know about the show and uh, anyone else that you know in sales know about the show. Um, you know, Eric, uh, there are people here taking some good notes. I'm just reading the the uh, the feed here and people are taking notes. They are. And one person brought up body language, you know, body language. We could do a whole show on body language and body language and closing. I mean, there's so many signals people give you. I'm ready to buy. I'm ready for you to close. It's it's kind of like romance. You know, it's kind of like dating. <clears throat> Their uh, body language accounts for a lot of the communication. But I, I really want to thank these people. I don't know if you're seeing the same feed I'm I'm seeing yeah. here, Eric. But they're you guys are getting actively involved. And one final uh, insight I want to share with you you can write this down also, is that the more actively involved the learner is, the more they learn. So if you are in a classroom and you are more actively involved in learning, you're taking more notes, you're going to learn more than the person next to you who's not actively involved, who's staring off into space, who's looking at their cell phone. So I, I really have to We've attracted, it's a small group, you know, I think in a month we're going to have 400 people on this show and we're, you know, once we get all the links working and everything else to promote it. Um, and Eric and I are going to be setting up a website where we're going to, it's going to be called The Influence Show. And we're going to have all of these shows there and you'll be able to go to them, point other people to go there and watch the shows. Eric, it's been a fantastic, uh, fantastic show. Very stimulating. Uh, and folks, remember, Eric is my number one student. I have trained over 100 sales trainers around the United States, Canada, and Australia. Eric is number one. I've had two of my partners have been PhD psychologists. Eric learned more deep sales psychology than my two PhD psychologists partners because he has a passion for it. He's a lifelong student of sales psychology, scripting, and psycholinguistics. So Eric, should we wrap it up here today and uh, look forward to the next Yeah, week? I have a couple final thoughts that I want to okay. share. We'll, we will wrap it up. And um, just a couple things on vision for the show for all of you. We will have up um, the uh, influence show.com. 
and all the links and we're going to turn this into a podcast for listen and how do you get on live and when is it and the whole thing so it's super easy for you guys to share and i believe that what we have here is um you know the, the making is of the the top show in the world on influence sales persuasion and influence and uh it, it wouldn't surprise me if there was a day we had a million people plug into this show i mean i think it has that kind of potential so we're excited to have you guys here at the beginning and uh i want to give a, a shout out to my coach steve hardison who's commenting in the chat steve thank you for showing up today and for hey, thank you your, steve your I'm, a, I'm a big i'm a big fan of steve's also uh and uh, i want to share one final uh thought with folks here and that is that everyone wants to be an influencer. I have some friends who have teenage kids. And it's funny, you know, you ask like a 13-year-old, what do you want to do when you grow up? And they used to say, oh, I want to be an astronaut. I want to, I want to be a zookeeper. I want, to, I want to be an engineer, whatever it is, doctor, lawyer. And now it's, you, know, you talk to 13-year-old kids, I want to be an influencer. Like Kim Kardashian or like, you know, there's just so many influencers out there. And you guys are influencers. You are, prof to, to be a sales mm -hmm. professional means you are a professional influencer. And the fact that you are on this show today shows your deep interest in getting even better at being a professional influencer. So you're ahead of the wave. You, and I have to congratulate you uh, for that. Awesome. So a couple of final thoughts here. So we had some people asking, you know, where do you get the recording? So wherever you're watching the show right now, that's where you can get the recording. So if you go on YouTube, if you're watching this on YouTube, you go under live and the recording show up there on Facebook. You go to my personal page, the recordings will be there. And on LinkedIn, they're on my, uh, my personal page. So that's where you can find it for now. And then in the very near future, you'll go to the influence show.com we already have the url and you guys can get it there and we're doing a, a show on closing so there has to be an offer at the end of the show so here's the close <laughs> and it's cool because it's free I'm not going to cost you guys a penny but i have two great next steps for all of you because you guys are like dr boyd and i you're lifelong learners so here's two great next free steps you can take and the first one is um a couple years ago, Dr. Moy and I did a special training where he, he actually did the training. I organized it on um, a concept that he calls life script. And it's very, very powerful. And uh, this was um, not a lot of people have seen this piece of content. Mm -hmm. So I will send it to you for free. All you need to do is just shoot me an email, eric at ericoffhome.com. And I'm going to give you both these offers. The second one is I'm teaching a one-day virtual seminar on Friday, February 24th from, I think it's nine to five, and it's called Sales Transformation. And we're gonna go into, it's all about mindset. It's all about your thinking around prospecting, closing. We're not gonna do a how-to training on that one. And so that's coming up on February 24th, and I'll send you the link. You guys can do that one for free, and you can invite your sales teams if any of you wanna bring your sales teams as well or your assistant or whatnot. So those are a couple of free offers. The way you claim those offers, just email me, eric at ericoffhome.com. Say, send it to me and I'll send you the links and you guys can do either or both of those. And then we'll be back on next Monday. Just put on your calendar every Monday. Now, Dr. Moy, next Monday is President's Day. Mm -hmm. So does that work for you or will you be uh, doing uh, you know, stuff not working that day? I'm working that day. I'm not, you know, if I worked for the post office or the government, I would, or a bank yeah, for, it's a bank holiday, it'd be a day off. But for people like you and me, Eric, you know, we're going to be at it and I'm going to be here. Awesome. Cool. So guys, President's Day, if you're going to want to spend some time, you could be on vacation and hanging out with your family. You can tune on your phone if you want or not, or watch the recording. So that's next week. You just put on your calendar every Monday, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m p.m. Eastern. It was so great to be with all of you. And Dr. Moyne, again, thank you for saying yes and for us being able to co-create this value for all, all of our, our uh, people that are interested in this conversation. So thank you so much. Okay. My pleasure. You guys go out there, help your clients, help your customers. And that means you have to close them to help them.
and use what you learned here today. We look forward to hearing some success stories from you in future calls, future shows. We're going to be getting more involvement from you, and we want to hear how you have applied what you've learned. Eric and I have a principle called share the victory. Eric will email me. I email Eric, and we share our victories, our big sales successes and other life successes with one another. It makes it so much more meaningful. We want to hear about your successes. Talk to y'all later. Bye-bye.